Modern life exists in a concrete jungle. Have you ever wanted to take a walk but get boiled in the process? Oh dear. And this is because you live in a concrete jungle. Do you look outside the window and see brick walls instead of leaves of various colours? What has happened to all the trees? Have you ever driven out of the city and actually seen a vast forest? Many trees are now getting cleared for roads, farming, housing, and it's just not going to stop. Would the world one day be fully concreted from one end of the globe to the other? Trees aren't there just for our shade, but rather they give us life. They give us the basic critical need of a human being. Ladies and gentlemen, trees are the lungs of the earth. They give us the bare insertion of man, oxygen. Without them, the whole humankind will cease to exist. Now, it all sounds like I'm just going to bore you throughout the speech with scientific facts, right? But hopefully, that won't happen. There are many ways to prevent that from happening with the use of forestry management, which is my topic for today. This is actually the practice of regulating the resources from the forest for society's use while preserving the forest's health. We all know that in Brunei, we're far from being scarce of trees. But are we, are we just going to wait until we're down to the last few ones before doing something about it? Today, I'm going to further discuss about the definition of sustainable forestry management, move on to the effects of a scarcity of trees, how it can be prevented, how it can be used as an ecosystem, as well as Brunei's statistics. In the most basic terms, sustainable forestry management is to always be looking to strike a balance between the demand for the, demand for the forest's resources and the vitality of the forest. Forest management should also aim to balance the needs of different forest users so that its cost and benefits are shared equitably. In the most basic terms of, sorry, trees are a crucial factor to our existence, not only because they produce paper, lumber, and chewing gum, but they serve an important role in the carbon cycle. In the most basic terms, such a forest can be sustained by planting a new sapling for every tree that is removed. But you, we have to be placed under consideration that the trees that we all admire, that are here today, are mature trees. This means it takes them about 10 to 15 years to grow up to their size today. It would be such a waste of time if society had to wait for 15 years before being able to cut down a tree. And like trees, we're all, trees are like human beings. We're all young at heart, aren't we? But like trees, people age with time and they get wiser, well, most of the time. Trees age and mature, and thus the value of the tree increases. Why cut down a tree that could be 50 years old, but could never live up to that? Because its lifespan has been shortened. And that brings us to the effects of a scarcity of trees. Without trees, the air would be unsuitable for breathing and would need gas masks to filter out the little oxygen that is actually left. In addition to that, this is because trees convert the carbon dioxide that we expel to oxygen for us. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, 2.5 billion people depend on agriculture for their livelihood. And if there was a scarcity of trees, it won't only affect them, but the soil that they use. The soil will be unprotected, full of pollutants that trees filter, and will be prone to soil erosion. The most common effect of a scarcity of trees is that trees play a major role in controlling global warming. And with the continued process of cutting down the trees, the ratio of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere will increase and pile on the burden of global warming. Other than that, 
a scarcity of trees has led to an extinction of various species of animals. Take, for example, the deforestation in the Amazon rainforest region. That has led to an extinction of 26 animal and plant species. Did you know that even our own proboscis monkey, yes, big nose, is under the risk of extinction? Due to Borneo Island losing forests equivalent to a third of Switzerland every year. Switzerland's pretty big, you gotta know that, right? Or at a growing rate of 3.2 million acres. Lastly, we all know that the goods that we use every day, paper, books, guitars, toilet paper, and beds, are made from trees. And if there was a scarcity of trees, these goods wouldn't be able to be produced, and that society would have to go for the alternative, plastic. There are many ways to prevent that from happening, which includes recycling, become an advocate, and I'm not sure whether most of you know this or not, but selective logging. By recycling, we're reducing the amount of trees that are being cut down to produce the same goods that can be made by recycling, such as paper, books, newspapers, etc. Becoming an advocate would mean to be a person that's preached the ways to help to save the rainforest, such as I am saying today, about telling you what the effects of a forest of a scarcity of trees would be like. And lastly, since we're all here to learn, Selective logging is the practice of removing certain trees while preserving the balance of the woodland. Even though selective logging is a bit more time consuming and more expensive, it does protect the forest's assets. How it can be used as an ecosystem. Forest management can also be used as an ecosystem as healthy forest ecosystems are life support systems. Goods forests provide a full suite of goods and services that are vital to human health. Natural assets we call ecosystem services. It can also be defined as a subset of the interaction between the ecosystem structure and processes that help support the capacity of an ecosystem to provide these goods and services. Benefits include Co ecological functions such as carbon storage, nutrient cycling, water and air purification, and maintenance of wildlife habitat. Secondly, social and cultural benefits such as ecotourism, traditional resource users, and spirituality. And lastly, pest and disease control. They also deliver provisioning services, which means products that can be derived from ecosystem services, which includes, as you can see, timber, water, fuel, non-timber fuel forest products, medicine of resources, and genetic resources. The primary challenge for sustainable forest management is finding ways to continue to benefit from these services without compromising the forest's ability to provide these services. We all know that in Brunei, while well, mostly forest, right? But how much? About 80% of Brunei's forest, about 80% of Brunei's land areas under forest cover, 60% of which has not yet been affected by human activities. Thanks to revenues from oil and natural gas exploitation, Brunei Dar es Salaam hasn't had a need yet to exploit its forests on a large scale. This is a bouncy graph. Of the part of the 28%, they are called protection forests, which means they are used to preserve soil and water quality, or conservation forests, which are used as such in national parks to serve ecotourism, scientific and educational interests. 43% are production forests, which allows for low levels of extraction of timber for commercial purposes. And lastly, the 29% are multi-purpose land. Presently, more than 50% of the country's domestic demand in saw and timber is met by controlled logging. This just proves that our country, Brunei Dar es Salaam, is also concerned about the conservation of our forest and is actually preventing a scarcity of trees. Would the world one day be fully concreted, like I said? What use is there to have the ability to breathe freely 
if one day the air we have an abundance of will run out, are we just going to wait until gas masks are in high demand before making a difference? Trees? Trees? And more trees. <laughs> trees, let's all gather, let's all gather around. <laughs> Do this together, pass the message, and scream unitedly. Save our trees. <laughs> trees and the conservation of it is what will bring our society closer. Eliminate any disturbances because, you know what? This is our planet, our one and only planet. Let's save the trees that we have now. Look, there's only four here. <laughs> <laughs> and that the future generations will do the same. I hope that my speech this afternoon has enlightened your understanding about the scarcity of trees and as well as forestry management. With this, ladies and gentlemen, I conclude my speech. Thank you.